Hey everyone, I'm really excited to present to you Harness Internal Developer Portal 2.0. It is a major upgrade to our Harness IDP product and it is reimagined for solving adoption and enterprise scale challenges. My name is Himanshu and I'm part of the IDP product team here at Harness. So let's dive in. Let's start with looking at some of the key challenges that our customers were facing in IDP 1.0. The number one was lack of granular RBAC inside catalog and workflows. Deciding who can see a catalog component and who can execute a workflow was not that easy as it should be. Lack of hierarchy. While we did have concepts like systems and domains, they were not truly serving the purpose of a project, organization, or an account level scopes as it's needed in enterprises. Everything required edits to the YAML files, and there was not easy for end users to really understand how to keep their catalog up to date. It was also hindering automation to be built on top of catalog. As you build uh, newer workflows, it was not really easy to build a workflow in your own contained project, test it out, share it with a few team members, and once it's ready, share it widely with your organization. The whole life cycle was very difficult uh, for platform engineers. The entire catalog was connecting to the Git provider using a single connector, and it, it, it caused a lot of API rate limits for our customers as the adoption of catalog grew uh, massively in, in, in the scale of thousands. And finally, the, the whole catalog UX was pretty outdated. It was built five years ago, and it did not meet the needs of our customers. With these and many other problems, we looked at our core data model, and we decided to introduce a newer version of IDP, called IDP 2.0. So let's look at some of the key features of IDP 2.0. Number one, hierarchy and granular are back. In IDP 2.0, you can now create catalog entities such as components, APIs, and resources, as well as workflows at a project, organization, or at the account level. So you can decide who can, if, if a workflow has to be visible for everyone in the company, create it at the account level. Or if you're working on a small project and you don't want to share it with anyone else, create it at a project level. You can use the roles, users, and user groups to explicitly decide who has what permission on, on your catalog and workflows. With using all the permissions and the concepts of resource groups, you can easily decide maybe you know, the architecture team is the only team who has access to create workflows while everyone else can execute them. These sort of use cases are, are going to be super easy. Git experience. Um, you can decide to keep your catalog entities and, and in, in the config as code model where the YAML, YAML definition lives as a file in your Git, or you can choose to create them inline, which means that there, that there is no need to create a YAML file in Git. Any update that you make to those YAML files will instantly uh, populate the catalog using webhooks, there's no more polling required or no more manual refresh required. The, I'm really excited about this one uh, because now users can make changes to the catalog directly using UI. You don't have to be an expert in the YAML. You don't have to go to the YAML file, figure out what annotation you have to change. So this is going to really unlock adoption. As the user, as you're making those changes, you can decide whether you want to push the changes to the Git using a direct push or a pull request. And, and you can decide whether you want to use your own credentials using OAuth or a central token or an API key. We support all major code repositories such as Harness Code, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and Azure repositories. Right. Next up, Newer catalog UX. It, it's a fresh and, and new look, you know, built for clarity and customization. You know, as, as a user, you can easily filter, um, you know, to your own view of your own team, 
just look at your own project, look at the components and APIs that, that you own, as well as look at you know, what is provided to you in your entire organization. Really easy to use filters uh, and future will also provide the ability to save these filters so you can customize your own view for yourself. Scorecards are now natively integrated uh, into the catalog view, really increasing the visibility of DevOps maturity, you know, um, security standards and such to the end users. And, and in the entity pages, you can now easily see what scope does this entity belong to, either it's owned by a particular project or it's available for everyone. Really excited about the new UX um, and, and we'll, we'll dive deeper into this uh, in future. UI-driven entity creation. Very, um, uh, in in one uh, anytime you have to create an entity, you would first find a YAML sample somewhere, put it in Git, and then register it using that YAML file. While in 2.0, you can start in the product, you can start by creating a component, you know, filling in the details, use the form uh, for a guided creation, but you can still switch between the YAML and visual view um, as, you're, as you're building up your, your entity, such as you know, com core, core components or, or workflows. Um, so yeah, we'll show, we'll show you that in a second on how this looks. Uh, but yeah, uh, you, can, you can use IDP uh, to create uh, new, com new entities. With the newer data model, we are now introducing really powerful APIs as well, which you can use to create, edit, or perform the, the rest of CRUD operations without really having to do the YAML file management. No need to commit a changes and then trigger the refresh API. Just directly use the catalog APIs and make changes. This will really unlock um, automation for our customers. This was not possible to do um, in 1.0 due to backstage API limitations, and we have uh, gotten rid of that problem. Um, note that there's no changes to the catalog ingestion API. They will continue to work as it is. Um, so with the newer APIs, we can now build you know, auto-discovery and auto-population in future, CLIs, Terraform providers. We're really excited about the newer APIs, and then we're looking for your feedback as well. Note that you'll continue to use Backstage plugins. There's no changes here. Continue to use the plugins or build your own. The core IDP still extends Backstage open source framework. All right, so timeline-wise, IDP 2.0 will be available at the end of April. Reach out to your Harness Technical Program Manager or at idp-interest at harness.io if you'd like to try this. And, and the end of July, IDP 2.0 will be generally available for all of our customers. With that, let's dive into the UX and then let's take a look at how this looks. All right, so this is the new catalog table. As I said, um, we'll talk about um, the new table in detail when it's out. But as you can see, um, no more wrapping issues. It, it's horizontally scrollable. Um, the filters are, are natively available here so that you can customize your view. By default, you can, can look at all of your components, APIs, resources together. No need to switch between the kinds. Um, so this is the new table. Scorecards are available natively. So now let's try creating a new entity in, inside uh, uh, the catalog. So let's create a new component. Um, so this is the visual view that, uh, uh, that I was talking about, where you can easily start uh, typing out the name of your entity. Um, you know, what, what, what sort of component is this? Is it a service, a uh, library, and so on? You can create your own type as well. Um, you know, types are flexible, um, as you might already know in the catalog. In order to set an owner, um, you can set yourself as the owner or set your team as the owner. Or if, if it's owned by some, like let's say a group, which is not really part of Harness, you can also uh, provide that. Um, in the previous world, you were, you'd have to really guess the YAML structure and, and, and put the exact uh, field um, over there. Very difficult for end users to understand. So tags, description, lifecycle, um, the, the core metadata of a component. And then you would decide where uh, the component will live. So you can create it inside your own project, or you can switch it to an organization if you want to share it with the entire organization. 
or you can create it at the account level as well so that everyone by default will get access to the to, to the component if i hit next this is where i will get to see the the yaml counterpart um and and if i want to continue to make changes in the yaml i can always uh, make changes over here look at the plugin documentation understand um, what annotations are required so that i can easily um, customize my component over here and now my component has been created so i can uh, view the component in the catalog or go to the edit page and, and continue to make changes i can bookmark it i can favorite it so that it is um, easily available to me so this is the catalog table and the entity creation now let's take a look at uh, filtering uh, the catalog entities based on the scopes that they are created in. So by default, you will see every component, every API, and every resource that you have view permission to. But let's say you want to narrow this down to your to your own project. So you can click on the scope filter, and here you can find a list of the projects that you usually work upon. Um, I work in the IDP team, so I will select the IDP team. But let's say you also want to select some of the core platform team. Um, you want to select the entire organization as well if you work in a very large enterprise. Um, or you can search for those uh, projects over here as well. Select as many scopes you want. And finally, um, the, the catalog table will be updated uh, to show only the entities as part of those scopes. Um, so this makes it really easy for developers to customize their view look at just their team, look at just their organization, or look at everything that they have access to. Let's now look at the new workflows homepage. Um, so these are self-service workflows that the developers can use to get started, to onboard a new application, or get access to, new, uh, to their systems. Um, so as you can see, the workflows can be grouped using workflow groups um, based on the dedicated use cases, so for example, here I'm looking at a new developer onboarding workflow group. And as a new developer, I can get access to Jira, to my GitHub, to my database, or set up an, a new deployment cluster for myself. Um, as I scroll down, I will then look at the workflows that are created at the organization level that I'm a part of. And maybe this, this is where things are different between different organizations. So I'm only looking at the standard software templates for my org and then not somewhere else. In a large enterprise, um, different orgs use different tools and that's why it's very important. So the, the entire page uh, shows workflows and, and groups from different different scopes that you have access to. And again, you can always filter the scopes that you want to look at, uh, you want to see workflows from. Basic filters such as, you know, looking at only the only the workflows that you own or the workflows that are your favorite or are or, or of a particular type, etc. You can still filter the workflows for yourself. Here is the, the admin counterpart of, of customizing that page that you just looked at at workflows. So you can create these groups um, at, at your own scopes um, and you can decide um, what are their name, what are the icons, what workflows are part of that. Uh, you can reorder them. You can can put your golden templates at the top. Uh, you can choose to add one of the existing workflows in the group and uh, customize that entire view of uh, um, workflows. All right, so that was a quick overview of IDP 2.0. Um, it is available in, in about four weeks from now, end of April. Um, let us know if this sounds interesting to you shoot an email uh, to idp-interest at harness.io or contact your technical program manager. We're very excited to get this going and get your early feedback. Thank you for watching.